God bless you, my brothers and sisters. Welcome to Destiny Online. Hey, we're, we're here back again, and I got two of my brothers here. Now we got two that are going to be testifying. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, for this month, man, we really want to declare the power and the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And there's no better way to see this than to see it in individuals' lives. And uh, today, you know, as I mentioned, we have two of my brothers. And I just want to encourage, uh, I know last week uh, we had questions come in a little bit late. We did answer them um, through the Facebook. But if, if once you're hearing them uh, testify, if there's something that you want to ask, uh, make sure to comment. Uh, and if we don't get to it here, we will do like uh, last week and we'll comment through the Facebook but send your questions, man. Let's interact uh, and let's get together here, okay, as we celebrate the name of Jesus. Amen. So tonight, guys, uh, we're going to start off with Brother Juan, and I'm going to let him take off, and then we'll give it to uh, Brother Joe as well. Amen. All right, Juan. Amen. How you doing out there? Those of you that are watching right now, Facebook, Instagram, China, Hawaii, wherever you may be looking at right now, worldwide. Anyway. My name is Juan, those that don't know me, my name is Juan Aguilar, and I attend this Destiny Community Church. I've been serving this church for many, many years. But today I want to share a little bit about my testimony, how I, I, I came to know Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. You know, before I made a, a decision to come to the Lord, it was one of my hardest decisions that I have ever made it in the beginning. So I thought I, it was hard. But what I'm trying to say here is that, you know, when I first... When I first started coming, when they first started talking to me about the Lord and about the Lord Jesus Christ, you know, I remember those times when they used to come and, and I accepted the Lord like around maybe 20, 30 times. I accepted it. You know, sometimes we say, you know, give, give Jesus, you know, your heart. And I would do it. I would do it over and over and over. But things were still the same. No, nothing changed. I would go back to my same old person that I was. For those who don't know me, I used to be an alcoholic. I used to be a drug addict for around 15 years of my life. 15 years selling drugs out there in the streets. That's all I knew what to do. I, saw drug, I thought I was going to be a drug addict for the rest of my life. I thought that was my life. But little did I know that God had a plan for me. But yet I didn't know how to, to um, stay in that walk with God. Every time that I would accept him, I didn't understand why I would always keep going back. But same old back. Sometimes I would come to the church. I remember Pastor Robert and Lori will come and talk to me about Jesus, okay. It seemed like if I was a real Christian already, I would come to church. I will be here like for a couple of months. Later, I'm back in the world. I'm back doing my drugs. Many times I've done that. Many times. So I, you know, I didn't understand because deep in my heart, I wanted change. I really wanted to change, but I didn't know. They said, well, just give your life. But I already did. I already gave my life to Christ. But I didn't understand why I could never stay established in the walk with God. I didn't understand and over and over, you know, coming to the Lord, you know. So I remember one time, one time I was at a church. And I did open my heart to God because I remember the Holy Spirit touched me in a way that, man, that's when I understood that there is a God. I cried to the, the altar. I cried like a baby like I never before. I really cried and I opened my heart. But, but, little did I know that I was going back again. Back again. Not knowing the word yet. You know, now, now that I understand the Bible, which it says, you know, it was better that you never would have known me because I went back to the world. And I understood, you know, when I went back that even then when I went back, I knew it was hard for me still. I wanted to come back. There was a struggle. You know, people would pray for me all the time. They would invite me to um, prayer meetings. And every time that I would go to those prayer meetings, I would get delivered. Brothers and sisters, there are demons out there. It was demonic. I would throw up. I was being delivered. God was so, he would deliver me over and over and over. But I never can, see, I would go back to church and I would still go back to the world. So I was like, what? I, I, but they told me, make a decision. I already did. I made the decision. But I remember one time, you know, I was out there in the streets. I was out there doing my drugs and I said, man, God, I don't want to be like that. I don't want to, but I didn't, I didn't know how. How to become a Christian, you can say, I don't know how to. What do I have to do? You said to give you my heart. I thought I gave it to him. I thought I did, but God knows our heart. God knows that we really, really gave our life to him. 
Because like I said, every time they would pray for me, I was getting delivered again. Meaning I didn't give him all my heart. I was still, I still had a lot of sin in my heart. So I didn't understand, you know, I, I thought I had made a decision. And I thought I made the decision. Then if I did, why am I the same? Why am I still doing drugs? Why do I struggle so much as a Christian? So I remember one day, man, this is what I wanted, man. I wanted, I wanted change in my life. And I said, man, everybody already prayed for me. I think everybody's tired of praying for me already. I've been coming and going, coming and going, coming and going. But one day I remember getting up and I said, you know, I think, you know, I wouldn't sleep for days because I was always on drugs. I was always awake, you know, on coke or drunk or whatever it was. 15 years of my life, that was my life. But God already had touched me. I knew that there was a God. So I wasn't the same anymore. I would try to go back, but I see a small voice in the back. Like I wasn't come, it wasn't the same anymore for me. So I knew I needed to come back, but it was hard. I, it, it looks hard at the time, but it's really simple. So one day I remember I said, man, I want to go back to church. I want to go back, but I don't, want, I don't want to continue coming back. So I said, what do I have to do? So I remember one time I went to uh, a church well, here by the west side. There was a lady there that I knew. And I waited. She knew me because this lady would pray for me over and over and over and over. And she would never. And I thank God that they never gave up praying for me. They would constantly be praying and praying for me. And one day I went to, the, uh, I went to that church. I said, man, I want to come back, but I, I just don't know how. So I remember going to, to that church. And I didn't go in. They were having a service, and I asked for this lady. And she came out, and she goes, oh, come on, Juan. Everybody knew me, but, you know. And I said, hermana, you know, I want to come to the church. I, wanna, I don't want to be out there anymore. So this lady looked at me, and, and this lady will pray, and Pastor Robert, they will pray for me for, I think, years, praying for me, praying for me. She looked at me and said, you know what, she didn't even pray for me. All she did is she looked at me, she said, Juan, God already done his part. Now you have to put your part. And, you know, all these times that they would pray for me, there was deliverance, man, I was throwing up, you know, because God delivers. There's demons and all kinds of things in this world that we live in. And I knew I had the spirit of drugs and alcohol and all kinds. I was in bondage. So she told me, God already did his part. She didn't even pray for me. She didn't even bother to pray for me. She said, you got to do your part. So when she told me that, something clicked in my heart, something clicked in my spirit. And I said, wow, okay. That was it. Nobody had to pray for me ever again to be delivered. That day I left. And I said, okay, I'm going to do my part. You know, this is what I'm going to do. But I made a decision in my heart. God knows your heart. God knows if you really repented. God knows if you really let go. And I did. I walked out. And ever since that day, it's been 22 years that I haven't looked back again. Nobody laid hands on me. Nobody done anything. I just, God saw my heart. Right there and then I was delivered. I was set free. And I've been serving the Lord now going on 23 years already. But what I want to say is the, the decision. It's, it's, it's based on a decision. A lot of you out there, maybe, you know, you want to come to church, but you're still like me. You go and you, and you go back to the same old because you haven't made that decision. You really have. God knows that you're not making the decision. But once you make it. Not only you're going to know, but people around you are going to see. They're going to see somebody different. You're not going to act the same. You're not going to talk the same. Man, you're going to want to be in church. You're going you know, to want to do everything that God requires you to do. You know what I mean? And that's what happened to me. But it was, a, it was just a decision that I thought it was so hard. I just needed to say yes to God. And it's true. He done his part. But we want him to do everything. No, we need to put our part too. Amen. You know, that's, that's amazing. Uh, so <laughs> for those that don't know, Juan is also my brother-in-law. So, yes, definitely, we, I know Juan, man, from back in the days. And I, I saw all this transition take place. Uh, he was the one that I was talking about last week when I mentioned he went back and forth many times at church. And I remember the first time that we witnessed to him, he told me, do you remember what you told me when we first witnessed to you? His nombre no quiero ir esa iglesia. What did you say? I don't, I don't want to go to that church where you throw flips, you throw maromas in the altar. 
<laughs> you know, he I was, thought I went to a church. This is, what is this? And I didn't want to come back. He didn't want to come to, to a church where they throw flips and so forth. And now he throws flips. Now I throw flips. <laughs> so, no, but there, there's the power of the resurrection. I mean, he, he was, you know, he was living a life that was dead, you know, dead in his trespasses, dead in sin. And, and it was noticeable with his marriage and, and his children and so forth. And, and from there, God took him out, took him out, and he did a miracle in this man's life. But I think as he highlighted many, many times right now, I really want to highlight this too because you, you have to understand that sometimes, you know, uh, and I've mentioned many times here at this church, uh, you know, about the prayer and then the practical, you know, and one it was no more about praying. I mean, I'm not saying that we weren't praying for him, but he needed to do his part, and, and it was about a decision. And I kind of feel that maybe tonight, maybe there's some people who are watching that you're struggling too, like Juan, and you want to get out of that, and you want to, you know, be set free, and you want to live a new life and a good life. And I'm telling you, God has that life for you. And, you know, and I know that maybe you're struggling. You're saying, I need prayer. And we will pray for you. But I'm telling you, like Juan, it, it takes a decision. It takes a decision. If you make that decision and say, that's it, never again. I'm never going to go back again. This is my decision from this point on forward. I'm telling you, you do the practical, the power of the resurrection comes. And he's going to lift you up and take you to live this new life, as Brother Juan just mentioned. 22, 23 years already serving God. Never elapsed back again because he made that decision to say yes to God and surrender his life. Amen. Any questions, guys, send them in right now. Send them in. Uh, at this point, I'm going to let Brother Joe also kind of share a little bit of his testimony as well. And likewise, if you have a question for him as he's commenting or talking, send them over, okay? All right, Brother Joe. Um, thank you, Pastor. Yes. Um, I just want to say hi, everybody in Facebook, um, my brothers and sisters. Um, I want to share my testimony you know, I haven't had a chance to share it at church, but I want to share it, you know, this, this very moment since Pastor gave me the opportunity. A um, couple of years back in 03, I was like 34 years old back then. Um, I was living my life recklessly. Um, drugs, prison, gangs. Um, you name it, you know. Um, I was living my life, you know, without no thought at all or purpose. Um, I came across enemies. I ended up um, one time at a club, I ended up getting stabbed. Um, this guy just came from behind me and started stabbing me. So, you know, I had a punctured lung, chest you know, the back, and and it was by the grace of God that, you know, I survived, and um, and it's only him, you know, but yet, still like that, I wouldn't, I was still blind, you know, I was blind, you know, I thought to myself, man, hombre, you know, I'm tough or whatever, but nah, that's, that's being selfish, that's not thinking straight, you know, that's worldly thinking. And um, then two months after my first stabbing, I got stabbed again. And I, and I was left for dead this time, um, right here on the west side. And um, this time, I mean, they left me for dead. Um, they slit my throat, stabbed me in the back of my head, my face, my body. You know, they were beating me up and all that. I kind of remembered almost everything. And the last thing I remember was the guy just looking down at me and stomp on my neck. And that was it. And um, and still like that, I mean, three days later, I woke up and I didn't know where I was or anything, you know. So I kind of lost it for a little bit. And... um. Um, I remember, you know, just thinking, you know, 
what happened, you know, and, um, and I looked myself in the mirror and I had staples from one side of my ear to the other. And um, I was just, wow, man, I, I d couldn't recognize myself, you know. I was beat up pretty bad, real bad. And, they, you know, I shouldn't even be talking because it cut my vocal cords um, halfway through my neck bone and stabbed close to my artery, main artery. But it's only God. See, it's only God. It wasn't my time yet, you know. And I'm grateful. When I came to know Christ, man, I, I think about the past. You know, I would think about the past. You know, man, what, what were you doing, you know? You know, God loves you, you know. I wasn't just, I mean, I was hurting everybody, my family, my brothers, my grandmother, my mom and dad, you know. They would always worry about me. But I was so prideful, you know. Then um, after that, you know, instead of, hey, you know, coming to Christ, that thanking Christ, once I got well, I started drinking again. I was out there looking for my enemies and, you know, still going into bars. And till one day, you know, I got, I met my wife and, and she told me, you know, about a year later, she, she goes, hey, you know, you want to go to church? And I said, nah, I don't want to, you know. Then she told me again, come on, go, go with me. You know, all right, I'll go just to keep her company. But little did I know, right? I mean, it, it's funny how, how God works. You know, my, you know, my plans are not like his plans, you know. You know, and, um. It's like Mike Tyson said, you know, he, um, he said, everybody has a plan until you stop step into the ring. <laughs> you know what I mean? I mean, they get you by, hit you by surprise. And, uh, anyways, um, I started going to church, and I was still drinking, and, and I remember being, being at church on a Sunday, you know, smelling alcohol, and I kind of felt embarrassed, right, because you could smell the alcohol. But then I said, ah, you know what, I ain't going to drink Saturday, so I won't smell like beer Sunday. And which I did, right, I only drank Friday. And anyways, um, um, next thing you know, I said, man, why am I going to drink Friday if I can't drink Saturday? So that, that's how it started, little by little. Next thing you know, I wasn't drinking. And one time, Pastor, you know, called the altar. And, and this little voice told me, you know, Hey, you know, go to the altar, go to the altar, because I had, re um, I was hurting real bad inside. I wouldn't show it on the outside, but inside I had a lot of anger. Um, I had real bad intentions on on the on the man, right? That that did harm to me. Um, anyways, um, you know, I went to the altar, and this little voice told me, you know, hey, you know, forgive, you know. Leave your enemies, you know, in God's hands. And so I went, I li I, I've listened, right? I understood what the, what he was, that little voice was telling me. So I went up to the front and I said, Lord, you know what, Lord? I leave my enemies in your hands. I don't want anything to do with them or any, you know, nothing. I leave them in your hands. And believe me, one thing happened that day. You know, I felt peace. And about two hours later, after church, an hour, no, yeah, like two hours later after church, I ran into one of my enemies. We were only maybe like two, two three feet apart, you know. And, and I told him, you know, hey, you know what, look, I gave my life to Christ, you know. Yeah, I forgive you, right. And, and one, that enemy tells me, there's nothing to forgive. And I told him, hey, man, you know, like I told you, you know, I gave my life to Christ and, you know, whatever happened, happened. And, and it's true, you know, like in the cartoons, I had an, an angel and, and the enemy on the other side telling me, hey, remember, remember how they left you? Remember, he's right here. Now's your chance. But then I had another voice telling me, remember, remember what you said? You forgave your enemies. Remember? So I had two things going at the same time. I couldn't move forward or backwards. 
And um, but you know who overcame, right? The Spirit. Yep. Better is He who lives in me than He who lives in the world. You know. And and I told my enemy, hey, you know what, man? Hey, like I said, you know, hey, that's it. And next thing you know, you know, we shook hands. And that's the only one I had ran into. And um, my point is that, you know, we got to forgive. If you don't forgive, you're going to live. You, you won't be able to live right mentally, physically, in your relation. You, you would always be looking out, you know, watching out who's going to come behind you or, or stuff like that. But when I forgave, hey, I was at peace. You see, you got to forgive. You don't forgive, you won't move forward. You know, when you give your life to Christ, you know, when you give your life to Christ, salvation and forgiveness come together. You know, God, God is our salvation, you know, and he forgives us. He forgave us just like we, we need to forgive our enemies. But we hold on to it. And, and the funny thing is, while they're out there living their lives, you're out here living your life all bitter. Because you hold on to that grudge. You got to let go of it. If not, you ain't gonna, you ain't gonna get nowhere. You know, and I'm grateful to God that, you know, He He's shown me a lot of things. You know. And and what's funny is that I don't have that um that um I I don't think of harming my enemies, you know. I don't how can I say, um if I were to run into the other four, I mean I mean, I know ain't nothing going to happen, you know, and because um, you know what? God has put them away from me. I've never ran into the other four, only one, you know, and, um, but I'm grateful to God that he gave me that peace, you know. I don't have to, you know, I don't hold a grudge on, on none of them because then I, I won't be able to live my life right, you know. But, you know, and I'm grateful, you know, to my wife, too, you know, for, for God using her to take me to church. You know. But, you know, we could make a change. But you got to be willing. When you forgive, you, do, you just don't, don't say, forgive me. Like the Pharisees, you know, like Jesus told the Pharisees, only, you only honor me from your lips. You know, you gotta, you, it's got to come from within. You know, and and there's got to be a willingness to forgive. You know, so, yes, Pastor. Amen. That's powerful. You know, when I first heard the testimony of Brother Joe, um, just thinking about, you know, what he went through, uh, because like him too, I was in gangs too. Uh, and, and thank God that I never got to the point where, uh, you know, I got stabbed. I got shot at many times, never hit, and thank God for that. But just hearing the stabbing, uh, you know, just giving the shills. And then, of course, the slice of throat, you know. Um, and, and I think the power, man, that I see behind that is, is to be able to forgive uh, the, that person or all of them. And, of course, God tested him through that one that he confronted. Uh, to be able to forgive, only God could, could do that. Only God can do that. Nobody else. Because if, if, if it wasn't God, Joe, yeah, it would have gone down a different way. It would have gone down. I was tired already. Yeah. Yeah. You let it go and say, forget it. And, you know, I'm telling you guys, I mean, I don't know if you've been through something similar. And if you haven't and you've had some grudges against other people, come on, guys. If Brother Joe can do it, you know, and leaving them, you know, almost dead. Uh, and he can forgive these guys. You need to forgive your mother, your your mother-in-law. You need to forgive your father-in-law. You need to forgive your grandma, or your mom, your dad, your kids. You need to forgive because the forgiveness makes us free. I, there was a, tr I believe there was a tremendous freedom you felt when you let these people go, right? Yes, I did. Yeah, tremendous freedom. I think both of y'all, even your decision, that day that you made that last decision, wow, tremendous freedom. 
And that's what Jesus Christ has to offer, guys. He wants to forgive you, to set you free. Amen. I think we have some questions here. This, Amen. Okay, there's, we don't know who are they to, just to either one. What verses helped you keep pushing when things got tough? Does anybody, do you have a verse that you feel that, that, you know, God spoke to you? Or is it like me, the entire Bible? <laughs> uh, the whole book, man, stories. But is there a particular verse maybe that helped you? Mine was John 3.16. That was always our favorite verse. Even when we were, I would always... For God so loved the world, you know, that he gave. Mm -hmm. When they started ministering to me, you know, I never knew that there was somebody that loved me because as I grew up, our family wasn't a family that would say, hey, we love you. Nobody, did. as we grew up, we never had that affirmation. So when they started telling me, Jesus loves you, I said, who loves me, you know? Mm -hmm. But then when I started hearing, nice, for God nice. so loved the world that he gave his only, and I started understanding, but Jesus loves you. I never, as growing up, I never, nobody ever told me they loved me. Wow. So that yeah. scripture, I like that. I used to wear the shirt and yeah. my hat, John 3.16. Yes, yes. Superman, remember all the shirts? The Superman oh. shirt, yes. So that was my favorite because, like I said, we never, I never lived in a family where we saved, we used to say, hey, we love you, brother, we love you, that we love you. No, we never had that. Nothing. We just, So hey. for you, <laughs> yeah. Or whatever. Yeah. But that scripture always stuck to me. Amen. You, my brother, anyone comes Mine's to mind? Mine's the one that, um. Where Jesus says, you know, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Mm -hmm. No one comes to the Father except through me. Yes. Because you see, I couldn't find a way. Mm. I didn't know a way to get out of out of the, the drugs and alcohol, the clubbing and all that. Yeah. You know? Amen. So I came to learn about Christ. Mm -hmm. um, that's when, that that's the one that stuck to me the most. Because he is the way. There is no other way. That's right. No other way. No other and we way. tried them. That's the thing, too. We've tried many things yeah. before coming to Christ, yeah. and nothing really worked. No, nope, nothing. Amen. Nothing. nothing. Amen. So life is found in the truth. Amen. Number two, question number two. Uh, did you ever lose heart? Uh, how did you keep uh, pursuing God? Did you ever lose heart in the process, I guess? And how did you keep pursuing God? I think that can relate more to you because you kind of went back and forth. I mean, did you ever, did you ever think, man, no lo va a ser, man. Quiero, pero I can't. I can't go. And But what helped you continue to push and say, no, I need to go back. You know, all the time that you went yeah, to the yeah. prayer meeting, like what pushed you? And did, But did you ever get a point where, nah, I'm not going to go no more? Yeah, many times. Mm -hmm. Many times, but like I, I know, you know, the Bible says that I think, you know, God has a plan. The Bible says that his sheep hear his voice, right? Even being out there, the Bible says that even while we were still sinners, he died for us. So even when I was, I was still doing my drugs and everything, you know, I think that pushed me because, you know. The spirit of God in you. Spirit of God that even while we're still sinners. Come on. He's able to speak. He, you're able to, because those that are called by his name, those that are his, his sheep hear his voice. I was in sin, but I was still hear something in me tick that. Hey. That's, that's because good. you know why? That's, that's true. Because he calls us by name, yeah. and I was his, and I knew something. You feel something was. I knew that I had to be in church, but I didn't know why. That dropped mm. me. That that. I know there's something. That's I gotta get out right of there. there. I gotta get out of there. That that's right there is the power of the resurrection. You know, Christ came and resurrected in us. He lives in us, and there's no doubt. Look at guys, if you are saved, man. I don't care where you're at. God will never leave you. He will always push you somewhere to get closer to God, to pray, to read. He'll push you. He'll push you. Uh, and it's crazy because though you can even find yourself in sin, uh, I believe it's Romans chapter 7. Romans chapter 7 where it says, Paul was saying, why do I do the things that I don't want to do? And the things that I want to do, I can't do. And that's what you're doing. And uh uh, he says, well, it's because sin is in my life. Sin is, is mastered in my life. But then Romans chapter 8 says, but there's no condemnation for those who are in Christ. So though we struggle and we're doing bad, 
there's no condemnation. God is in you, and he's wanting, and there is that push. That is what pushes you to not give up. That's what pushes you to come to church. That's what pushes you to read. That's what pushes you to get back up from the floor, from the ground that you're in because of your situation and the wrong steps you took. God is the one who will never leave you nor forsake you, and so that, that is good. Any other questions? Was that it? There was some more? All right. We're going to do these more here and then we're going to go ahead and go into the okay we got four and that's going to be it all right here we go how does one forgive themselves for what they have done to others since you were talking about forgiveness Mm -hmm. how does one forgive themselves for what they have done to others well first before i came to christ i knew i had to to forgive myself because even though they, they hurt me, it was me holding the, 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 bad, the bad intentions of harming them back. Yeah. You know? So I had to ask God for forgiveness. Yeah. You know? And be sincere about it. And, and he gave me that peace. Yeah. You know? And, um, you know, I know my enemies. I mean, I, w- I would hear things, but, you know, it's. They're, they're not forgivable, you know. Yeah. But still, you know, I forgive them, you know. I, I think sometimes this is a very hard thing to do. Uh, <laughs> sometimes God is quicker to forgive us than we ourselves to forgive ourselves mm-hmm. uh, for all the dumb things that we do. Uh, but that's when um, I think if you build a relationship with God, you get to know God. When he said it, John 3, 6, and for God so loved the world. That was impacting for him because he never had any kind of, that kind of love and somebody that can forgive them 70 times 7, which is what Jesus told Peter to do to forgive brothers. God is a God who forgives, and he'll forgive you no matter where you find yourself over and over until he comes back. This, we're in the time of grace. He loves you. He wants to forgive you, but you need to, I think that as you develop a relationship with God, you also will start to understand his, his great love for you, and you'll start to understand his forgiveness too. Number two, what scripture is, a good, is good when you feel like throwing in the towel? What scripture is good when you feel like throwing in the towel? Uh, You know, let me just throw some out there. Uh, I think Jeremiah 29, 11 is one of my favorite verses. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, not to harm you, but to give you hope and a future. So sometimes our plans don't work out as, you know, um, because we live in this world. And our plans don't work out. Sometimes we get discouraged and stuff. But I want to tell you, I think for me, uh, I know that God has a plan for my life. And and it's never going to harm me, even if it doesn't work out the way I think. Right. It's not going to it's not going to harm. I mean, it's always going to yeah. be good because he has a plan. I don't know if any scripture comes. You, you know, Pastor, before you throw in the towel, you know, I believe you got to look yourself in the mirror. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. Is it worth it? No, I think. Yeah. Because you know what? When I look myself in the mirror, you know, something tells me, you know, hey, you know, don't don't give up. Yeah. You know? There's no reason for me to give up. Even though I struggle and everything, I went through my chemo and all that, I didn't give up. That's right. I'm here. That's right. You know, I'm grateful despite of everything, whatever happens, I'm alive. You know, yeah. I'm, not, I'm not dead. Yeah. You know, awesome. And, um, you know, before people, you know, they shouldn't throw in the towel. Yeah. You know, they shouldn't, they shouldn't give up. That's right. Because, right. yeah. you know, there's a way, you know, in Christ. Through Christ. Yeah. I think, man, throughout Scripture, I think there's, there's many Scriptures that, you know, I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. Mm-hmm. Now there's a crown waiting for me, you know. But if we look throughout the Scripture, man, Jesus himself, I th- he's our role model. Man, he mm-hmm. never gave up. He says, for this purpose, yep. I have come into this world. And, and even though he wanted to give up and get seven, he says, not my will, but your will be done. Mm-hmm. And, you know, Pastor, on my Facebook, I have um. I put on there, who am I that a king should die in my place? Mm. That's right. His love. I say that to myself. Hey, who am I? Mm-hmm. I mean, he, he will, you know, he's the king of kings. Mm-hmm. If anything, we should die for him. But hey, That's he put right. his crown down, his throne, came from heaven, and gave his life for us. 
Amen. You know, and Amen. we still want to say, you know, want to throw in the towel. He, he didn't throw in the towel. Yeah. He went all the way. That's right. You know, That's he right. went all the way. That's right. I think First Peter 5, 8, just, but God demonstrates his love that while we were yet sinners, he died for us. And there's that love, like, man, mm -hmm. why would I give up, man? If I was wretched and ugly, he died mm -hmm. for me. I mean, why would I die? I mean, he loves me so. Why would I throw in, want to throw in the towel? So, yes, mm -hmm. it's good. Uh, number three, when, when you forgive, do we forget and return to the same circumstances? Andale. No. <laughs> uh, uh Well, one, you don't want to forget. Because if you forget, you're going to do it again. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. You know, that's why, uh, you know, it's, it's, fun. It's, it's how people read the scripture. You know, how it speaks to you. Uh, people think that, you know, forgive and forget. No, you can't forget. It's like a wound, you know, when you cut yourself, right? Yeah, that's right. You, you got to take care of it. You got to take care of it for it to heal. And all you're going to have is a scar. And you're always going to remember that yeah, scar, where it came from, scar. how did it happen. Uh, yeah, that's just a good like illustration. God, you know, I remember God. That's right. Every time, every day, you know, I, I remember God is always on my mind. You know, yeah. despite of what I go through and all that, but God amazes me through my hard time. Yeah, that's a deep one right here, too, because we can really go deep uh, depending on uh, going back to the same circumstances. That's That one's pretty deep. Maybe one day we'll have more time to explain that a little bit further. The last one is, should I feel guilty even though I am blessed while others are suffering? No. No. Unless you're making, looking down on other people, yeah. then, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I mean, because we all can be blessed, and we're all blessed. That's right. Mm -hmm. We're blessed automatically once we give our rich. life to Christ. We're rich. That's rich right. in what? In God. That's right. You know, not, yes. not the material things or anything like that, but, you know, richness in God. That's right. That's right. So we're all blessed. If you have Christ, we're all blessed in Jesus' name. Um, you know, and we ought to pray for those who are suffering. We ought to help those who are suffering. That's what we do. That's we're blessed so that we can be a blessing to other people. Um, but amen. Well, this is all we have for now. Tonight, we're going to go into some worship and then I'll come back in. If you have any petitions that you want me to pray for at the end of the service, go ahead and bring them in. Uh, send them to us and we'll pray for them at the end of the service. Amen. So let's worship Jesus tonight. Amen. It's not a mountain. 
of Jesus I will build for greater things There's no power like the power of Jesus The faith will rise The faith will rise And all agree There's no power like the power of Jesus Live 
Just to worship you, Lord. Oh, how we worship you, God.
Work. 
working, Lord. You're working. That's who you are. Let's pray, guys. I want to pray for some family, just family issues that are going on. God, that you would be in the middle of the issue in the family. God, that you would pour your love and your peace, Jesus, in the middle of the family, God, for the petitions of families not losing their fervor for you, God. Father, this is the time, Lord, to really press through, God. Lord, I pray, Jesus, for an awakening, God, for those who are straying away, for those who, Lord, are losing this fire, God, that you would awaken and that you would quicken their spirit, God. In the name of Jesus, nothing is impossible for you, God. Lord, we stand in the gap, Lord, and we're believing great things to come, Lord. We're believing great things. This is just a season, God. And every season has its reason and its purpose, God. Thank you for what you're doing now, God. Thank you for this season, God, because you're doing something, God. Even though we don't see you, God, you're working, God. Even though we don't feel you, God, you are working, God. We believe and we trust in you, God. I pray for people that are discouraged right now, God. I pray, God, that you would awaken them, God. Give them hope, Jesus, once again, God. Help them to see you, God, in the name of Jesus. I thank you and I bless you this evening, God, in the name of Jesus Christ. We love you and we praise you. Amen and amen. Tonight, guys, before we head out, just quickly a reminder, guys, truly uh, you have been a blessing on the giving. We just want to continue to encourage that. Online, dcc sa dot org forward slash give and then we have a text you got a text give you got to put give on that text the number is 210-761-6960 it's 6960 okay so just letting you know uh we really appreciate your gifts and and your offering and your ties and so forth we love you church and we know that very soon we're going to be meeting together very soon amen i miss y'all I love y'all, and we'll be seeing you next week, Wednesday. Don't miss out, guys. Next week, Wednesday, another powerful testimony uh, you're going to be hearing here on DCC Online. But Sunday's on the way to you, so get ready for Sunday. God bless you. We love you. Bye-bye. Jesus.